Excellent. Welcome to the Metasploit team demo meeting. New modules, we've got some new modules. Let's see here, contributor Oshack created a module targeting vulnerable versions of Laravel, a PHP framework web development suite. This new module exploits an unauthenticated vulnerability that allows for PHP object deserialization and command execution, super cool. Contributor Weitzman provided a module targeting several versions of the OSSE cloud backup solution, which allow for insecure file upload and code execution. While this module does require authentication, no worries if you don't have it. This module can take advantage of a feature, one which is enabled by default at OSSE CBS installation time, and automatically create a trial account on your behalf, followed immediately by the file upload and execution. Super convenient. And we'll have a demo of this. Our own space created a new WordPress targeting module, which allows an authenticated user to exploit a command injection vulnerability in the WP database backup plugin versions prior to 5.2, uh, thanks to an unsanitized post parameter. Space also added a module which exploits a vulnerability in the Apex deployment service, also known as Apex SVC, in Windows 10 prior to build 17763. Due to improper handling of hard links, a user can gain full privileges over a system-owned file, which this module utilizes on an existing session with a vulnerable target to execute a payload as the system user. Love it. Contributor Viter ESPF created a module targeting vulnerable Schneider Electric Endura video encoding devices. These are used in surveillance solutions, which exploits inadequate access controls within the web UI to enable the SSH service and change the root password. This was successfully tested against a number of these devices as well. Our own Jay Robles provided a module targeting an elevation of privilege vulnerability found in some versions of Windows dating back to Windows 7 up through Windows 10, where the Win32K component fails to properly handle objects in memory. Exploiting this against a vulnerable target, this module utilizes an existing session to execute a payload as a system user. Ooh, system. Rounding out our list, Contributor Nick Trier has a new evasion module. It's our first one landed from the community, which is super cool in itself. This module is designed to evade solutions such as software restriction policies and app locker, and will work on all versions of Windows that are using one of those solutions and include .NET versions 3.5 or greater, while not explicitly blocking install util.exe or the Microsoft.NET directory. Worth checking out for sure. And some other interesting work going on, enhancements and features. Contributor Oso Speed added the ability for 64-bit Linux payloads to be XOR encoded based on target host name. This ensures successful payload execution occurs only on targets with specified host name, which is super cool. Contributor B calls provided two nice enhancements. Uh, first, he added Linux target support to the script web delivery exploit module as well as support for PubPern, which is Windows Publish Printer BBS script as a target. Nice. Uh, Bcoles also added a shutdown method to the MSF exploit remote TCP mix-in, providing a more consistent experience for module developers. I appreciate that. And our own WVU added an improvement to MSF Venom's bad chars and encrypt key options to support character literals in addition to escape text. Neat. Bug fixes. Contributor GreenM fixed the ability for auxiliary modules, which are not scanners, to successfully use our host for targeting. Contributor OSAC fixed the check method of the Joomla registration privesc ox module to operate as expected. And our own WBO dropped in a few fixes, including a fix for a recent regression to ensure shell features like glob and pipe are handled correctly for commands which get passed through by MSF console. And also to gracefully, a fix to gracefully support nil payloads in the is payload compatible method. Some good fixes there. All right, the bonus slide. We had a bonus slide last time. You're going to get it again this time. If you're headed out to Vegas for DEF CON next week, that is next week. A bunch of the Metasploit crew from Rapid7 will be there too in our open source security meetup, also known as OSSM or pronounced awesome. This year we'll be hosting what we're, we're calling open source office hours on that Friday and Sunday in a suite at Bally's. Do you have questions around some Metasploit development or integration you're working on or thinking about? Want to chat with others about your open source project? Then come on by. You can get all the details, including our code of conduct that folks will be expected to follow in our recent post at blog.rapid7.com. 
blog at rapid 7com is also the place where you can catch up on recent framework activity via our weekly Metasploit wrap up blog post there. And as always, a huge thanks to everybody who helps contribute in making Metasploit better. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I think a lot of the Metasploit team is going to be there. At least uh, I, I, I'm going to be there. I'm Buster B on, on GitHub. That's uh, right. WVU is, I think, going to be dropping by. And, yeah. Uh, got a, He'll be there. Adam, A. Kamek. Yeah. Uh, myself, Aaron Blywise. Uh, we, get, we got a crew. Matthew will be there. Uh, and Jeffrey Martin, I think, will be there too. Give an appearance. So. Be pretty awesome. Caitlin Condon, don't miss that. And with that, <laughs> Let's have some demos. Okay. Well, we've generated an interpreter while the noise contamination has happened. Um, uh, it's a Mako. It's stageless. Use XOI multi handler. What are we exploiting, Will? Um, Okay, so um, Sonic Pi is a music production suite tool framework for um, OS X, uh, Windows, Raspberry Pis. It's um, if you're familiar with Super Collider, it's um, normally Super Collider's got a whole bunch of bindings for different languages to programmatically perform music and operate software synthesizers. Um, Sonic Pi is all entirely in Ruby. It has a pretty snazzy interface. Um, I've always wanted to do music production. Uh, I used to play with uh, Fruity Loops in the FL Studio uh, many years ago, but was never really good at it. Um, Sonic Pi is all Ruby, um, so it felt much more natural to write code and debug code than to uh, uh, drag beats across the screen, if you will, <laughs> in different colors. Um, so we can test this. Uh, it's got a tutorial down here. It's got uh, your code window here. It's got a log here, cues for all the um, various things you do. They'll come up as cues and you can sync to those. And then here's a little oscilloscope-like thing. You can do, place 70 is a pretty common example. I don't know if you can hear this, but Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that go through Zoom? Is that good? It did. Okay. Yep. Cool. So uh, that plays the 70th, 70th note on the piano. And um, you can do things like um, you can change BPM, you can use different synth. Um, gosh, I guess a better example would be a live loop, which. Um, allows you to do a threaded loop. So you can do multiple loops. Um, you, I think sample, sorry, my type is bad at this point. One, and so it's all Ruby. Um, use BPM, uh, 20. So I use a sample, sleeps one beat. Um, it's good to remember that those sleeps are beats, not seconds. Um, and you can pretty much do anything you want. Um, you can add your own samples too. So um, over here. Is there a sandbox? Can I have a reverse shell run inside here as well? Well, actually, because of this, um, so well, how it works, it, it has a uh, OSC, Open Sound Control, which is a, uh, a UDP protocol. Um, and uh, it listens locally, you can pass it uh, a packed message with um, arbitrary Ruby code and it will execute it. So I have actually run a reverse shell through this. Um, there's also the ability to run an external one, um, which means kind of remote code execute. It is technically bound to the slash OSC prefix. So triggers sent only there will, will work. Um, but otherwise this is Pretty local. Um, so we got an interpreter over here. We can run it. We need to get a shell first, of course. Did I do this wrong? <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, we'll skip that bit. So we have a session here. Um, we're going to use a new use command. 
use Sonic Pi since there's only one option. It picked it and used it. <coughs> Little info here. Uh, Sam Ernst, the guy who made this uh, from University of Cambridge, if I recall correctly. Uh, it has some side effects, obviously, auto effects and some screen effects when it creates the GUI down here if it's not already running. So I can actually kill this. Kill that GUI. Um, works on interpreters and shell. You have a couple actions, run and stop. I've provided a sample file um, to run. I can copy it. And uh, we'll go through this here. I think it's a little bit more. Oh, thank you to Brent for getting my rhythm right on the melody here. There are a couple six, actually, there's a 16th notes of a half note. So I for detail. Yeah, so 0 0.25 versus 0 0.5. Um, so let's get right to it. Obviously, reloading that doesn't work here. Um, we want to set our session to negative one. Sorry if I'm clearing my screen. I want to set start Sonic Pi to true. Um, there are also other options for the Ruby path and the Sonic Pi path. Since Ruby's packaged with this, you can call the Ruby directly in there. And the way this module works is it actually first uses LSOF oops, to check if the service is running. If it's not, it tries to execute it. Um, it actually uses this little Ruby stuff to do a UDP socket send with the OSC pack message for run code. Um, agents, just something random. I use a random app name from Faker. You gotta pad it with zeros. Um, the file is the same. Uh, there might be some bad charts in here, but so far nothing um, at issue. Probably quotes, maybe. Um, but yeah, here's the Ruby and here's the SelectPy app. So I guess we can get this started. Although I want to get a lot of data post. Sonic by example. Um, yeah, thanks to Brent there. We want the fluff. Right, so I had a little stub here for a little extra. Okay, oh, I don't think I need to reload. Let's give it a shot. Starting it. It's <laughs> excellent. Caitlin will love this. <laughs> So basically, you're, you're, you you can just do code injection over UDP yeah. right into the server, and it yeah. executes your code. Right? Oh, there's a cowboy <laughs> bell too, 32 beats in. Oh yeah, I noticed that. I had to reduce the amplitude to. We didn't want too much cowbell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always add more cowbell if you need to. Right? <laughs> and they will. Yeah. I want to try something here. And it does run for 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> or more, actually. It's, 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 it's as long as you need it. It takes pretty good OJ. Yeah. Oh my god, make it sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's an infinite loop. Sorry. <laughs> Let me try one one more thing. Yeah. Yeah, they made like a eight minute version of the loop for Microsoft by Matt's point to that space. Nice. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I should have saved this here. Uh, paste two. Okay. I don't know if 
this will work, but it's worth a shot. We have a new session. Uh, yeah. We have a new session run through Sonic Pi, and it doesn't actually show up here in the queues or anything. But um, so you that's how you get shelter. local code execution. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all there is to it. Nobody wants that. They just want to play music. Porque no los dos. That's right. Exactly. Super right. cool. Awesome. Thanks, Will. So uh, we had a recent departure. Uh, Mr. Aaron Soto had, got a really cool offer to go do something he was excited about. Uh, and being the classy guy he is, he, he uh, gave us a, a parting demo video of the ASE uh, module that landed this, this last cycle around. So I'm going to play that. So I'm going to be demoing a module that exploits the ASE CBS. This is the cloud backup suite, and it's a Windows and Linux-based server application that lets sysadmins manage their network machines as they backup files. Uh, community contributor Weitzman has been working with the developers on a series of vulnerabilities. Uh, this particular one leads to uh, unauthenticated remote code execution. And so this module has two modes. One is it can take valid credentials, that's a username and password, or it can create a temporary trial account, uh, which will be cleaned up after exploitation. And the module itself works by first uploading uh, a payload in the form of an EXE and a matching uh, JSP, that's a Java server page uh, document. And when a request is made for that JSP, we get uh, code execution. So to take a look at what this module uh, looks like in the real world, you'll see I have the ASE CBS set up here. And if I were to uh, choose, I could go ahead and use the credentials for a valid user. But let's take a look at what happens when I uh, use the trial account functionality. So uh, let's go ahead and kick off a uh, look at the options here. And you'll notice that we have a username and password that are randomized. This is every time we uh, instantiate the module, we'll get a, a randomized username and password that are generated. And we can replace those with known good ones if we wanted to. But in this case, I've gone ahead and set the create account parameter to true. And so what that's going to do is going to go ahead and create a user with these credentials for the purposes of the exploit. Uh, before we kick it off, we do have a check that's supported. So right now, versions, uh, all versions starting with 7 or 8 are, uh, are supported. Um, and if we go ahead and kick off the exploit here, you'll notice it runs through uh, a number of stages. And so we'll start off by confirming whether those credentials are valid or not. Uh, if they are not valid, we're going to go ahead and create a trial account before uploading our EXC and JSP document, and then triggering the JSP to get code execution. Uh, after that, we begin cleanup, so we'll go ahead and uh, remove the uh, user from our uh, configuration. Uh, we will uh, also clean up the EXC and JSP documents, uh, and then you'll notice that we have our interpreter session here. And because the server actually runs as system, we do uh, exploit onto the box with system level privileges, so that's a pretty good bonus as well. Uh, I'll go ahead and end here by saying that uh, it may be possible after talking with the contributor to uh, chain this in such a way so as to gain control of client workstations as they do backups. So there may be some more work to be done here. Uh, we may see some future modules, so definitely stay tuned. Thank you. All right. That was awesome. That was. Thank you, Aaron. Excellent.